like Tyler, it's your boy, Tyler. Okay. I see an icon, a showstopper. But they're not gonna believe me because I'm just a Julia. I just wanna tell them find a wife and a daughter. Alright, y'all, it's your boy, Trey. Today we got Bible Talk episode 36. Today we're going to be reading Revelation 3. So we're in the final book of the Bible. And I'm super excited to finish because I've been reading it all the way through for like a while. And it, it's going to feel so good to just get to the end and then go back to the beginning and really just see stuff I might have missed the first time around I um, read through it. So super excited for that. But if this is your first time, we do Bible Talk every Thursday on the channel. And if you get anything or notice anything that I read, comment down below and we can talk about it. So we're going to hop right into it. Let me pray real quick. Lord, thank you so much for allowing me to do 38 episodes of Bible Talk. I pray that whatever I read today out of Revelation 3 can touch me, touch somebody who hears it and can be put into our life to do today. Amen. So <clears throat> Revelation is basically, I read the first two already, Jesus talking a lot. So chapter three is um, titled the dead church. So verse one, and to the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things say he who has the seven spirits of God in the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have re received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Stardust, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blow out his name. Yeah, I will not blot out his name from the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches, the faithful church. Verse seven, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shut. He, let me reread that. He who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God in the name of the city of my God in the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. So this is Jesus talking to the different churches over the world at the time, which is which is crazy because it says that the faithful church, the faithful church, the dead church. And now it's the lukewarm, the lukewarm church. That's funny. Um, verse 14, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, says the amen. These things, says the amen, the faithful and the true witness and the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. 
I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say I am rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know what you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich in white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eyes yeah, eye salvi that you may see <laughs> as many as I as many as I love I rebuke and chasten therefore be zealous and repent Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. See, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. So right there, it says um, verse 21 to him. Who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I over as I also overcame and sat down with my father. So Jesus just said right there that everything we go through, he's went through and he overcame it. So that that tells us that whatever we're struggling with in life, whatever sin, whatever just problems, we can overcome it because Jesus could. And that's really that's really good. So <laughs> And so it was kind of funny to me when they said a lukewarm church in um, this part, like Jesus said, verse 16, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. That's crazy. Don't be a lukewarm church. I would say be a faithful church. Cause that, that was probably the best one because he says, Verse eight, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. Like, that's really good. And then the dead church, um, it is what it is, a dead church. But um, let me know what y'all think about that down below. Let me know if you got anything out of there. It's just Jesus talking to the churches. So I feel like Revelation so far has been Jesus just giving information and basically saying his goodbyes before he leaves for the second time. Well, not for, well, yeah, before he goes up and ascends. And it's just, it's so, it's just so crazy. Like imagine being there back then and and being around him this time, around this time. Like I'm sure it was so crazy for the people around him. I know it was crazy, but let me know what you think down below, man. Let me pray us out. Lord, thank you so much for allowing me to read Bible, read read Revelation 3. Thank you so much for allowing me to understand everything I read today because sometimes it's hard to understand. I also just pray that anybody who is listening to this, you just bless them. You give them comfort. Amen. Amen. And amen. If you made it this far into Bible talk, thank you so much. I'll see y'all next Thursday.